kindly for joining us. We are live from our building, the Macklin Building in downtown Charlottesville, a show today presented by Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Integrated Medicine. This show is dynamic, and we encourage you, the viewer and listener, to leave your comments, your perspective, your questions and answers in social media comment sections. I will relay that information on air as we try to make this a very fluid discussion about Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Today we're going to introduce a new segment to the show that I think, I think you will like. Um, I'm going to try to showcase some of the history of businesses locally that are iconic or have withstood the test of time. And we're going to lead the um, highlighting of iconic businesses with one of my personal favorites, Timberlake's Drugstore and Soda Fountain. I've been going to this business for, good, good Lord, it seems like almost 30 years. Timberlake's, interestingly, first started on the downtown mall in 1917. Previously, before Timberlake's opened its doors, at that specific location, People's Bank stood this afternoon, actually this morning, um, I spent about a half an hour speaking with the owner of Timberlakes. His name is John Plants. Mr. Plants has owned the business since 1977. And when Mr. Plants was talking about his, his baby, he was getting, frankly, very emotional because he was beaming with such pride. I said, Mr. Plants, you're getting emotional, sir. There he is on screen. Well done, Judah Whitcow, our director. There's the owner of Timberlakes right there on screen. I said, Mr. Plants, you're getting emotional, sir. Why are you getting emotional? And he said, Jerry, do you have kids? I said, yes, sir, I have two sons. And he goes, do you speak with pride about them? I said, sir, I try every day. And he said, Jerry, when you speak with pride about your children, do you get emotional? And I said, yes, sir, I do. And then I said, Mr. Plants, I completely understand your passion, your emotion, and your pride, sir. I'm going to highlight some, uh, some aspects of the conversation I had with Mr. Plants today. We're going to show some photos on screen. We thank friend of the program, John Blair, for putting this on our radar. I asked the trivia question earlier in the week. We've introduced a new segment of the program, the I Love Seville Show trivia question, where we'll spotlight local factoids, ask you to answer the tri trivia question, and if you answer the trivia question correctly, you win a sticker from us. We mail it to you. Literally comes directly to you. It's a pretty nice sticker, if I do say so myself. On Monday, I asked a trivia question, what's the oldest restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia? Charlottesville City Limits. We got many answers. We got the Aberdeen Barn. We got c &O Restaurant. We got Jack and Jill's, just to name a few. The answer I was looking for, the oldest restaurant in Charlottesville City Limits, I thought was the Virginian Restaurant, a restaurant established in 1923. This is the 100-year anniversary of the Virginian restaurant, which is today owned by friend of the program, Andy McClure. John Blair on LinkedIn, and Mr. Blair, friend of the program, aficionado of Central Virginia, all around nice guy, and I've seen recently he, he can kick 46-yard punts. Uh, yes, punts, as in the sport football, the guy's got a hell of a leg. He's posting videos on Twitter of him being just a great dad with his son and literally booting long balls. John, the hang time on your punts, extraordinary, my friend. He asked me a question. He said, Jerry, does Timberlakes count? And I immediately discounted John's comment. And I should not have discounted Mr. Blair's comment. Today, I thought as I was driving to work about John's Comet, Timberlake's oldest restaurant in Charlottesville. I went to Timberlake's and I spoke to the owner, and John may be on to something. Timberlake's was founded in 1917. Judy, if, if you could weave some of the photos on screen that you took today from the Hall of Fame at Timberlake's Drugstore and Soda Fountain. If you go into Timberlakes today, you will see these photos on the wall. In 1917, Timberlakes was founded on the downtown mall. That makes it six years younger, or, or a business that launched six years earlier than the Virginian. Six years. Now, I asked Mr. Plants what food was served at this drugstore and soda fountain in 1917. He can, with 100% confirmation, say that milkshakes 
and many flavors at the soda fountain were served. He cannot with 100% confirmation say sandwiches were served like they are today. So maybe it's an asterisk. Timberlake's Drugstore is the oldest restaurant in Charlottesville city limits, asterisk, founded in 1917 at a location that was previously People's Bank. Interestingly, the soda fountain was in the front of the building. Do you have photos that show that the, photo, the soda fountain was in the front? Could you put that on screen if you could for us? I'm getting there. <clears throat> Thank you, Judah. Judah's our enterprising director and, frankly, key contributor to the talk show, a personality that resonates throughout Central Virginia and up and down the eastern seaboard. Some folks call him J-Dubs. I call him all-around nice guy in front of the program. Um, the soda fountain was at the front of the building in 1970. At the front of the building. It was a soda fountain in 1917 that had dark mahogany wood a soda fountain in 1917 where beverages were served in glasses. The soda fountain at the front of the store. In 1960, the soda fountain was moved to the back of the store as a measure of convenience. The thought was to allow folks to shop in the front and then head to the back should they choose to eat. So in 1960, the soda fountain was moved to the back. This may be the oldest restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia. That's a trivia question that will get a cocktail party absolutely conversating and rocking and rolling. Previously, People's Bank... The bank decided to relocate down the block... Soon thereafter, Marshall Timberlake opened in 1917 on the downtown mall. The front of the building was redesigned to make it more retail-like instead of a bank. But in the late 1950s, the front was changed back to its original appearance. In 2002, the back soda fountain was remodeled by John Plants. And he remodeled it in 2002 to resemble what he thought the soda fountain looked like in 1917 based on photos. This place is awesome. If you want to go back to a one shot for us, if you've cycled through the photos, that'd be great. And thank you, Judah, for um, really adapting on the fly today on a new segment that I really kind of just dumped on you at 11.47 this morning. I apologize for that. But once again, you've risen to the occasion. Here's what I'd like before I go to the next segment. I'd like for us that love to support local businesses in this community to really, around, really rally around John Plants and Timberlake's soda fountain and drugstore. Go get a slice of pie there. Better yet, go to the drugstore and the soda fountain. Put your cell phone in your back pocket, your purse, your backpack, your computer bag, and don't bring it out. Sit in the back of the soda fountain and enjoy a wood-burning fireplace that has been in operation since 1917. Is the wood-burning fireplace at the back of that soda fountain the longest-running commercial wood-burning fireplace in city limits? I don't have that answer. But can someone answer or offer a suggestion a fireplace that's been burning wood in a commercial setting longer than 1917 and the one that's in the back of this soda fountain. I can't think of one. I'm open-minded to learning. Props to Mr. Blair for putting this on my radar. We may have a new um, oldest restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia. Before I get to the next topic, why don't we go to the two shot and welcome Judah Wickhauer. Judah, we can put the trivia question on screen as well. Uh, when you have an opportunity. Here's the trivia question I have for everyone watching this show. What was the first brewery in Charlottesville, Virginia history? Leave your answer in the comment section on social media. Anyone who gets this correct will have an opportunity to win a free sticker mailed by us, postage we cover, 
directly to an address of your choice, a pretty, pretty nice sticker. Dave Warwick, the first winner of the I Love Seville trivia question. Um, all right, J-Dubs. Before I get off, before we get to the drug bust on Cleveland Avenue, enough fentanyl in that drug bust to kill 128,000 Charlotte's villains, as Hall Spencer wrote in the Daily Progress today. A drug bust that had guns, nine of them, cocaine, fentanyl, fake fentanyl, cash money, an arsenal, intriguing and, and oddly and curious enough, only one 18-year-old popped with that cachet of weapons and drugs. I, I, I give props to the police department for taking the guns and the drugs off street. I wonder if this 18-year-old is part of an ongoing investigation that can, could potentially lead to much bigger fish. Because an 18-year-old from Arrington carrying that much weight, having that much money, and having that much drugs, that guy's not the guy. He yeah. doesn't know the connect. He's not the guy. That 18-year-old from Arrington's the fall guy. He's not the kingpin. He's not the kingpin. He's the fall guy, and his life is, is, is effed, basically, right? Yeah. Before we get to that story, you went to uh, Timber Lakes today. Got to be one of my favorite spots. Got to be one of my favorite spots. Coconut pie, $3 coconut pie, a chicken salad sandwich to die for, maybe one of the best chicken salad sandwiches I've had, a milkshake hand spun with malt flavor, a cherry on top, enjoyed while listening to a wood-burning fire crackle next to you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a great, uh, it's a great throwback to, uh, to old Americana. Um, I know not everybody has the same, uh, the same view of that, but, uh, but this place is a classic and uh, definitely worth checking out. Do you have any idea what was the first brewery in Charlottesville history? Viewers and listeners, leave your answer in the comment section. Bill McChesney says South Street. Kevin Yancey says South Street. Kevin Yancey says Star Hill as well. Um, you got Nora saying um, South Street. What's the first brewery in Charlottesville city limits? An opportunity to win a sticker today. Janice Boyce Trevelyan says South Street. Do you have any idea? Do you know the answer to this? I mean, I think we've covered this before in the past, but I have a terrible memory if I don't write something down. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, echo a lot of the answers here and say uh, South Street. All right, viewers and listeners, put your answers, the answers in the feed. We will relay the answer to the uh, question at the end of the show. Um, all right, drug bust. Let's get to it. Um, first, props. Props to the Charlottesville Police Department. Mm -hmm. Props to Mike Cotches. Props to Jay, Jefferson Area Drug Enforcement. Props to all the police officers and the authorities that worked in this multi-jurisdictional drug bust. A drug bust that, frankly, is of terrifying proportions. Terrifying proportions. Hall Spencer wrote this story in the Daily Progress. His lead, L-E-D-E, -E, it's a newspaper term, really caught my attention. Here's the lead from Hall Spencer in today's newspaper. A Nelson County 18-year-old was arrested Wednesday after a raid on a house in the Johnson Village neighborhood turned up nine weapons and enough fentanyl to kill 128,000 people. Shaheem Michi of Arrington, which is in Nelson County, was arrested for two counts of drug possession with intent to distribute and one count of possessing firearms with drugs. Agents with the Jefferson Area Drug Enforcement Task Force, in cooperation with the Charlottesville Police Department, executed the search warrant in the 500 block of Cleveland Avenue. Enough fentanyl to kill 128,000 people. Yeah. The guns are legit. We're talking six handguns, including an AR-15 pistol with no serial number. Yeah, there's a picture on screen. Three rifles. Look at the screen, guys, of what was captured. Three rifles, including an AK-47 assault rifle, a high-capacity magazine, 428 grams of cocaine, 256 grams of fentanyl, 1,600 counterfeit M30 fentanyl pills, 200 grams of meth, and about $4,700 in cash. Good God. 
Tony Montana on Cleveland Avenue. Good Lord. Denzel from that movie where he was traveling to Africa to buy the blow and then smuggling it back into the country through the U.S. military? What movie was that? Denzel, the entrepreneur, traveling to Africa to buy blow and smuggling, and smuggling in through the military. You know the movie I'm talking about. Tony Montana on Cleveland Avenue. That's a completely different movie. I get that. But did we just catch Scarface? Did the Charlottesville Police Department just catch Scarface on Cleveland Avenue and the Jefferson Park Avenue, Johnson Village neighborhood? An 18-year-old Scarface? Um, I don't think so, probably right? Probably not. No, I don't think so. They didn't catch Scarface. They caught, as Judah liked to, likes to call him, the, uh, what do you call him, the bad guy? The, the holding the bag? What do you call him? Uh, yeah, the uh, patsy. Yeah, no, but you call him something when it comes to finance. Oh, yeah, bag holder. Yeah, the 18-year-old's the bag holder. Somebody left him holding the bag. Someone left him literally holding the bag. Yeah. And I'm not trying to poke fun at an 18-year-old whose life is effed. A guy who was used and abused and then kicked to the curb and is now going to spend years behind bars worrying constantly. Yeah. Okay. Anyone who reads this story, the first thing we should be doing is giving props to the Charlottesville Police Department, props to Jade. The second thing we should be doing is thanking the police department and Jade for getting this information out to us. Let's celebrate a win. Mm -hmm. But what we really need to ask ourselves is, where's the weight coming from? Where's the weight? Weight. Synonym for drugs. This is some serious drugs. Where's the ammunition coming from? Where's the steel coming from? Mm -hmm. Why is an 18-year-old in a house on Cleveland Avenue a hop, skip, and a jump away from Fry Spring Station, a hop, skip, and a jump away from Dirty Nellies, a hop, skip, and a jump away from UVA Grounds? Why is an 18-year-old have this kind of weight and this kind of guns, this kind of arsenal? Yeah. Who's setting up shop in Charlottesville? They probably already set up shop. You're right. Who's the connect? I think that's probably what the police are finding out. You think this kid, 18-year-old, snitch, getting stitches? Because if you read in the article, the charges right now, a little light. Mm -hmm. Mitchie was arrested, as Hall Spencer reports, under state law... What he's did, what what he's done, classifies as class five and no, no, no. I take that back. I'm going to read this verbatim. The charges he has, class five and class six, the two lowest felony categories, can bring a ten-year sentence but the courts tend toward leniency for first-time offenders. So he didn't get the heavy charge the police may have seen him as a as a lesser uh, a lesser as a pawn yeah or uh, or is there a little negotiation going on for some higher ranking people and their whereabouts could be that too or could uh, could be both so worry you that there's this kind of weight and arsenal on the street I think it would if uh, if the police department wasn't on it. I mean, if uh, you know, if somebody had posted this pic, if somebody had posted this picture on Instagram or Facebook and said, "Hey, yeah, I saw this ain't at got a nothing. party. Police ain't got nothing on us. Look what we're doing in Seville. That would ter- that would terrify me. That would terrify me too. But uh, but this tells me that they're on the job and they're finding, uh, you know, they're pulling this in um i know i know the f- probably everyone's first question is well they just got an 18 year old who's to say that they even got anywhere you know this could be like you know like we said they've got the patsy they got the you know they got the low man on the totem pole but let me put it this way what if uh what if the police found out that all of this, all this stuff that you're looking at, 
at least all the, the, the drug portion of it. What if they found out that all that was about to go out on the streets tomorrow? I, I'm much... There's a good point right there. You would much rather the 18-year-old get popped and not the kingpin, the connect, middle management, upper management get popped. But you guarantee that the weight doesn't get on the street. I would much rather have everything point. on that table off the street than, than them waiting to, to get a you know, picture-worthy uh, you know, bust of... Heavy hitters. Yeah. Well, well said. Excellent point. Fantastic point. Fantastic point. Give Judah Wickhauer props. Dylan's rule on Twitter says Judah is great and says the history on Timberlakes today was awesome. And he appreciates the local history segment. We could weave that into the show some more. Uh, John, I'll get to your comment on LinkedIn about Timberlakes history. That's a great point. If the officers involved had the choice to make, take the weight off the street, but only arrest an 18-year-old Patsy, Pawn, Fall Guy. Yeah or wait and hope to get a heavy hitter, upper management, the connect's gonna, not going to be with this weight in Cleveland Avenue. Let's cut to the chase. Number one's not going to be in, on Cleveland Avenue, the 500 block, with this kind of weight in the room. Connect's too smart to do that. Upper management, possibly. Yeah. You're saying the choice is take the drugs in the 18-year-old or wait and risk the drugs getting on the street, but then you get upper management, you go all day, every day, get the drugs off the street. I'm with you. Definitely. I'm with it, you. It reminds me of some of the terrible, terrible decisions our country has made in terms of like trying to, you know, trying to fight crime and things like sending, sending guns to other countries, trying to track them and then losing track of them and having them come back into our country. And I would rather, I would rather our, our police department make, make a move on some stuff like this. Then, uh, then try to be clever and have it, have it come back to, to bite us in the, in the tuchus. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think that's the first time that word's ever been said on the show. How do you spell that word? Uh, Say it again. Tuchus. Tuchus. How do you spell tuchus? I would <laughs> guess... Uh, T-U-C- no, you can't look. H-U-S. You can't look. You try to spell it. I'll look it up. Let's see. He's a, he's a very, very good speller. Tukus. T-U-C-H-U-S. Oh, hold on. It's Yiddish. T- What'd you say? I said T-U-C-H-U-S. That's it. T-U-C-H-U-S. T-U-C-H-U-S. If anybody wants to know it means some other... means buttocks. Uh, a slang for buttocks. Yeah. That's a great word, buttocks. If anyone wants to know any other uh, uh, <clears throat> Yiddish words for uh, unmentionables, uh, <laughs> I've got them. <laughs> Why do you have so many Yiddish <laughs> words for unmentionables? Because my dad's Jewish. My dad's okay. Jewish. Do, give me some more Yiddish words for unmentionables. I would love to learn. I'm li- willing to listen to learn here. The All show right. is yours. Do you really? Do you really? Yes. Want this is fantastic. This Yiddish words for unmentionables? Please. I, I, can't, I can't even think of the last time the word unmentionable has been used on this talk show. We, <laughs> I would love some Yiddish words for unmentionables, please. I, I'm, really, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not w- sure why we're going in this direction, but uh, uh, schma- schmackle. Is What's a, a cl- schmackle? Schmackle is a classic. You're going to have to look that one up because I'm not describing it online. Well, it's a bad word? It's not a bad word any more than uh, tukus is a bad word. Okay, Although, schmackle? Schmackle? Try S- how, do you, how do you spell schmackle? S- I'm not as good a, sh- a speller as you. Try S-C-H. S-C-H. M-E-K-E-L. M-E-K-L? E-L. Schmackle. Was an all. Schmackle was an all transgender Jewish folk punk band from Brooklyn, New York. That's literally what it says. Schmackle was an all transgender Jewish folk punk band from Brooklyn, New York, known for their satirical lyrical material. What is which Schmackle? Are you a fan of this this punk band? You this look, Jewish folk punk band from Brooklyn? I think maybe you looked up the wrong thing, or maybe you didn't look up uh, Yiddish. I, well, what's the word mean? 
irritating behavior? Oh, I see where it means now. There's the next, okay, okay. Go there ahead, you say go. it. I see why you chose not to do it. It's a, it's, a, it's a size reference. It's a size reference to Schmeckel. Size? Oh. There we go. Okay. Um, Bill McChesney's loving the dialogue over here. All right. I have um, Ginny Who on where Twitter. Sh- it's where the word schmuck comes from. Ginny Who I didn't know on that. The, Schmuck, I know. Schmuck is a good Yiddish word. Ginny Who says history and language lessons. The school is done for the day and is laughing out loud. That's what we're here for. I'm responding to it. That's what we are here for. And then laugh emoji. Send to Ginny Who 98 on Twitter. I just sent you a tweet, Ginny. Um, all right. On LinkedIn, John Blair on Timberlakes. Jerry, I'll tell you what. How about sometime this spring, I bring a pie from Mrs. Rose, one of the oldest restaurants in Stanton, which is also known for its pies, and you get one from Timberlakes. We could have a pie taste off contest on the show. That would be a lot of fun. That's a great idea. It's a fantastic idea. He brings a pie from Mrs. Rose in Stanton. I get a pie from Timberlakes. You know who the true winner of this is? Judah. <laughs> Judah. As long as they're not as, <laughs> please please don't get uh, please don't get coconut pies. You don't like coconut pie? Eh. The coconut pie is an iconic pie at Timberlake. You okay, fine. I'll, I promise you I'm no coconut. The, I'm not the biggest coconut fan. Okay, no coconut. All right, so that's the only request you have for John from Stanton and me from Timberlake. No coconut pie. Yeah. Okay, no other? How about a meringue pie? Like a lemon meringue? Sure, why not? A key lime? Oh, key lime pie. You like a key lime? <laughs> All right, now I know where <laughs> we to got go. A, we, got a, we got a family joke. What's uh, the family joke? It's... It was just about. It's more. It's more a uh, an anecdote about a guy that was in the uh, in the hospital and uh, didn't speak the best English. And somebody asked him uh, if he liked key lime pie, and uh, he's like, "Key lime pie. I love key lime pie." So they gave him some key lime pie. Um, Kevin Yancey has got a message for John Blair here. He says, "Mr. Blair, you may." Not want to go to Mrs. Rose. Mrs. Rose passed away and the food has drastically changed. Kevin Yancey mm-hmm. offering some perspective on Mrs. Rose and Stanton. Um, I mentioned this live on air. That's a shame. That is a shame. Rest in power, Mrs. Rose. I don't know your brand, but your name resonates loudly on the I Love Seville network. Bill McChesney, the mayor of McIntyre, says, watch Ghost on CBS. The, CBS, the pantsless character Trevor is Jewish. Oh, thank you for that. Did he say the pantsless? Yeah, I said the pantsless. He's specifically saying this was not in the part of Cleveland Avenue near Fry Springs. The person from Arrington that had the guns, drugs, and cash on Cleveland Avenue was just off Fifth Street Extended. It's, an, it's uh, the 500 block. It's an apartment block. Okay, thanks for that clarity. That's, thank you for that clarity. Cleveland Avenue runs into JPA. Bill McChesney is emphasizing this this is more toward the fifth street side of cleveland avenue and not the jpa side of cleveland avenue thank you for that clarity bill i respect and appreciate that um let's go to twitter first scottsville then twitter matt lawless was the town manager of scottsville he resigned i thought his resignation was somewhat surprising um i was also caught out off guard with the town manager of scottsville and what he was earning the town manager, the number one executive of Scottsville, was in the, the vicinity of, of, of 55 to 70 for being the town manager of Scottsville. I thought, considering his pedigree, his resume, and the fact that he's the number one shot caller of a town, he would be making more money than that. Hmm. He resigned, um, and we now know, after he posted on Twitter, where the town manager former of Scottsville is going. Matt Lawless says on Twitter, my job search is complete. I'm headed to Shelburne, Vermont. I was ta- town manager. I'm so grateful for the trust of their select board. It's a beautiful place with exciting challenges in local government. I start in June. Virginia friends, let's get, to get together soon. So congratulations to Matt Lawless on heading to Shelburne, Vermont. Um, thank you, Ginny Hu, who says the show has her rolling right now. Laughing hysterically. <laughs> I think it's the schmeckle. <laughs> the schmeckle talk. Get you every, um, get you, get, it'll get you every time. It's the first time I ever heard the word schmeckle. 
No idea which speckle was. Do you want to offer any more? We should introduce a segment, Yiddish with Judah. Oh, man. My, uh, my aunt names all of her dogs Yiddish words. She names all of her dogs Yiddish words. Is this the great aunt? You say no, aunt no, or no. aunt? This is, this is, I say aunt. Okay, I say aunt. You say aunt? Yeah. I say aunt. I'm How from do California. You, what do you say, tomato or tomato? Tomato. You say tomato? I say tomato. You no, say, you don't. I say tomato. You say what? <laughs> you well, do not. What do you say? Tomato. Tomato. T- aunt? Aunt. Aunt. Potato? Potato. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. You have a great aunt that smokes cigarettes like a chimney and pounds Jack Daniels. Or was that your grandma? That was my grandmother. Okay. Your grandma goes to the bar with a business card saying, this is my order. Jack, this is, tell me if my memory's correct. Your grandma goes to the bar. She's got a business card. I want Jack Daniels in one cup, ice in another cup, and I want you to bring them to me in separate glasses. That's how one cup and the other cup generally <laughs> works. But yeah, yeah. And she chain smokes what cigarette brand? Uh, I think it was Parliament's. Okay. Parliament so she Lights. chain smokes P Funks and pounds Jack Daniels in the afternoon and goes to the bar with a business card with her drink order. Sounds like an amazing woman. Now you're going to tell us a fantastic tale of your great aunt. I can't wait to no, hear it. No, no, no. This, this is not my great aunt. My great aunt. You just said aunt. aunt. I thought you said you said aunt. You said aunt. This is my, this is my aunt. This is my aunt Karen. Okay. Uh, Proverbial or literal? Is, is she a Karen? Like an actual Karen on her birth certificate? Yeah, her name is Karen. <laughs> okay, her name is Karen. Okay, go ahead. I thought um, you were making a joke here. Like schmeckle. I mean, I, I'm just, I guess I'm just listing her, her dog names. Uh, okay, yes, she, that's what we're trying to hear. We're was, waiting uh, in anticipation. It was Pupik. What? And what did that, what's that chutzpah. mean in Yiddish? Oh, I love chutzpah. Pupik. I use chutzpah often on this talk show. And, oh, and Shana Madel. Tell me that one. Shana Madel means little princess. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog was it? A little dog. What kind, though? An American classic? Was it an American classic? Or was it a purebred? American classic is a mutt. That's our way of calling it a mutt. American classic. I, I honestly don't remember. Okay. I, I'd, have to, I'd have to go search through her, her Facebook photo history to find pictures. Where's your great aunt live? My, well, my great aunt, <laughs> your, Leona, she's the one that I went to see... <laughs> She is the one that I went to see uh, when I went to California. Okay. Uh, Aunt Leona. And, and let me just say, I, I was blessed to be able to go out there. Oh, I, do, I, but okay. here's why. I'm not saying you are. Here's why. She passed away. What? A week after we went out there. Your aunt passed away? My great aunt. She you never on- told me that. Why are you telling me that now live on the show? The time earlier this year where you left... You- was, well, it was my my parents are going out because it was my my niece's birthday, but it was a chance for us to go see my my great aunt Leona, my aunt Karen, another aunt Aunt Karen another, who names her dogs Yiddish another, words, yeah, and like another, chutzpah, and another aunt Car- Caroline. What I this is like the Golden that I, Girls that I'd never that I'd never met before. Aunt Leona, Aunt Karen, and Aunt Caroline, Aunt Leona. Just passed away. I'm she sorry pa- to hear this. She passed away a week after we went out there. Aunt Karen has a pack of dogs named after Yiddish words like Not chutzpah. Anymore. Not anymore. I don't think they're, I don't, I don't know exactly which ones are still alive, but how they're not How did Aunt all Leona pass away? I'm sorry to hear this. The, the, you, how long ago was this? Why didn't you tell me this off air? I'm sorry to hear this. I'm glad you went to go I, see her. I learned from a text from my, from my dad on a Friday night. It's not like I was... It's not like I was carrying it around with me uh, to work. Uh, it's you know it's something I found out, and my family texted back and forth a little bit about it. I told them that I felt blessed that I was able to see her again because the last time I'd seen her was probably a decade ago. 
give or take. And so it was, uh, it was amazing to see her. I got to spend some time with her alone. She, uh, she told me if I, if I was ever able to make it out again, she'd take me out to lunch. She's just a, a great woman. And, uh, and I was, you know, I praise the Lord that I was able to, uh, that my family was able to, to get me out there to see her. There you go. Last time. You know what? Being a good person and authentic and genuine and compassionate and caring runs in your family tree. Not just Aunt Leona, Aunt Leona. Judah Wickhauer as well. Thank you. You get, the Wickhauers have big hearts. I'm rest in power, Aunt Leona, Aunt yeah. Leona. And we love you, Aunt Karen, especially you, Hutzpah. And now I gotta, now I gotta find all of her dogs. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna show her dogs. Um, uh, first, before you show no, the I'm dogs, gonna, can I'm, you put, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get pictures of them. But, before uh, you show the dogs, can you get the best and worst thing we saw on Twitter? Can you show the Neil Williamson screenshot? Neil uh, Williamson, are you watching the program? You often watch today. You often watch the I Love Seville show, and we love that about you, Neil Williamson. Neil Williamson put this on Twitter yesterday. Let us know when that screenshot's up, if you could, please. It's up. It's on. We we got a segment best and worst thing we've seen on Twitter. And really, I think I should probably rename it. Um, thank you, Dylan's Rule. Dylan's Rule says, not sure what's happened the past few weeks, but this has become a truly entertaining hour every single day. Thank you for saying that. I wish you said, I'm not sure what's happened the past few years. But the past <laughs> few weeks, we'll take it. We will take it, Dylan's Rule. And we love your contributions on Twitter as well. Okay, let me get to, um, i got a lot going on here. Let me quote that re- that quote that tweet. Um, Thank you for watching. We very much appreciate your engagement on Twitter, sir. I think he's sir. Do you think Dylan's rule is a sir or a man? Uh, I would say sir. I'll say sir. I mean, he's got a picture of Dylan I would imagine this is the fact that Virginia is a Dylan rule state, so his Twitter handle is Dylan's rule. Mm. Is the person in your profile picture Mr. Dylan, i.e. the the rule the state is named the rule the person the, the rule is named after? Is that right? Dylan's rule. Offer some perspective into the the uh, history or some background on your profile picture, if you could. I'll relay it live on air. This is from Neil Williamson. I retweeted it. Follow me on Twitter. A lot of the content we talk about on the show, we um, highlight on Twitter. Neil Williamson says, you still got it on screen? Yeah. Charlottesville Mayor Lloyd Snook just suggested many believe a bait and switch with the new zoning ordinance that could destroy existing single family neighborhoods. Read that. Read the tweet on screen, everyone. This is from Neil Williamson. Come back to us on a two shot. You know what's interesting about this? The upzoning has not been finished in Seville city limits. We're not, we're still heading to the finish line. It's not fully approved. Mm. This fiasco has lasted such a long time that now Michael Payne and Lloyd Snook, they're running for re-election and you got a lot of folks in Seville city limits. I would bet you over half of Charlottesville city is Mm. opposed to upzoning. Let's call Charlottesville city 50,000 people. I would bet you over half of 50,000 people are vehemently opposed to upzoning in city limits. Hmm. Now Lloyd Snook and Michael Payne are running for re-election. Their decision on this could influence how people vote. Now there's a caveat. There are three spots up for election, Payne, Snook, and McGill, and only four people are running. The Sean Cooper, Bob Fenwick, Michael Payne, and Lloyd Snook. Four people for three spots. But Snook and Payne are going to have to answer to upzoning now. And the fact that so many people are vehemently opposed to this, I'm curious to see how this influences their re-election efforts. And on that note, Mayor Lloyd Snook and Councillor Michael Payne will be on Real Talk, our 10.15 a.m. talk show, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They will be on the show this Friday at 10.15 a.m., Mayor Snook and Councillor Payne. Um, and Dylan's rule says, I am a man but no one would use the word schmeckle to describe me. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh God, Judah! Look at what you've done. <laughs> uh, Yiddish is such a beautiful, oh. beautiful, colorful language. <laughs> Chutzpah is probably my favorite. Oh man! All right, we'll get to comments. Let's relay some comments live on air. If you have comments, put them in the feed, and we'll relay them live on air. Kevin Yancey thinks Woodard Properties will become the maintenance company for the Dogwood Properties that Charlottesville is trying to buy, the Charlottesville uh, mm. CRHA, Redevelopment and Housing Authority. He thinks that the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority is then going to outsource the maintenance of the 74-unit portfolio to Back. Woodard Properties. That would be a little too conflict of interest -y. I hope that does not happen. I hope that does not happen. Time will tell. I, I do think that CRHA is going to have an incredibly difficult time managing this massive portfolio that's on their near horizon. CRHA has an incredibly difficult time managing their existing portfolio of public housing. Mm -hmm. How is CRHA going to manage an additional 74 units when their current stock of inventory is not up to date or does not meet standards that many of us would approve or accept? Seriously. I mean, we talk about this all the time. Government getting into real estate ownership is terrifying. Yeah. Chad Wood. Um, he says, we need to stop it before it leads to someone dying. Slap on the wrist is the problem now. Chad Wood would like to see the Commonwealth Attorney's Office drop the hammer on the 18-year-old and make an example out of him, giving him life in prison. Kyle Irvin really? watching the program. Kyle, lo and behold, I tune in and I see the picture that was posted yesterday. Kyle Irvin, we are singing the praises of the Charlottesville Police Department. Yes, sir, I will shoot you a message later today. And absolutely, I would love to get some dates and times on the table so we can get Chief Cotchis on the show. And he agrees on Mrs. Rose. He loves Mrs. Rose. Um, that's fantastic. I would love to get Chief Cotchis on the show, Mr. Irvin. We will spend an hour or so humanizing him, personalizing him, and localizing him. Judah can attest this will be a fair interview setting with no gotcha questions, open-ended questions. Um, Kyle, we would love to get Chief Cotchis on the show, sir. Um, Olivia Branch has a guest on the first brewery in Charlottesville history. Olivia Branch, I will say this, you are one smart lady. You may be winning a uh, sticker, and right now you are the only person to get this right. You are one smart lady. I think we may have the only winner of the question here. Should I, act, should I give the answer to the question now, Judah? Uh, she's the first one to get it. You she's the only know. one. I, I didn't think we'd have an answer. A lot of people are saying the first brewery in Charlottesville City Limits was South Street Brewery. And the answer is South Street is true. Mm -hmm. They are the first brewery that is still in existence today. However, the first brewery in Charlottesville, Virginia history was Blue Ridge Brewery on West Main Street. Blue Ridge Brewery is no longer in operation, but Blue Ridge Brewery was the first brewery in Charlottesville city limits on West Main Street. That brewery was owned and managed by grandchildren of writer William Faulkner. That's a damn good trivia question. Wow. What is the first brewery in Charlottesville City Limits history? <laughs> it's not South Street. It's not Star Hill. Remember, Star Hill first started on West Main Street as well. The first brewery in Charlottesville City Limits history, Blue Ridge Brewery on West Main Street, owned and managed by grandchildren of famed writer William Faulkner. Damn good. Yeah. Olivia Branch gets the sticker. Olivia, Judah Wickhauer is going to reach out to you via direct message when this show is done looking for a mailing address, and you have a sticker, I Love Seville, on us heading your way. And she says, I'm just an aging diva who remembers good old days. She <laughs> is the definition of Charlottesville. She is well-connected, well-networked, always stylish, always beautiful, always on the know, always on the go. Olivia Branch, the queen of Keswick, and one of our favorite listeners and viewers of this fine and fair talk show. So we gave you some really good stuff today, I think. 
The reason I wanted to introduce the business history segment is because I, sometimes I get, you know, I, I like covering the hard news of the day, mm -hmm. but I also want to use the platform to accentuate and highlight and spotlight folks that are doing great things. Yeah. That's why I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think you got two potential trivia questions for you. If someone says, what is the oldest restaurant in Charlottesville city limits? The Virginian in 1923 is celebrating its 100th year. It's pretty monumental. Annie McClure owns the Virginian restaurant. He also owns the Biltmore. Annie McClure owns Citizen Burger Bar. He owns Citizen Burger Bar in Carytown. He owns the building that Citizen Burger Bar Carytown is located in. He's a prolific restaurateur. He's a friend of the program. His restaurant may be number two, though. Timberlake's Soda Fountain and Drugstore launched in 1917. And we have 100% confirmation that they served milkshakes and flavored soda at this soda fountain. Andy, I do not have 100% confirmation that food was served, like a sandwich. But I do, I do know a milkshake was served. I hate to use the word assume, but I would think the soda fountain would be serving other things besides just soda and milkshakes. Mm -hmm. Especially when you show the photo of the soda fountain. In 1917, the soda fountain was in the front of Timber Lakes at the storefront it, instead of in the back like it is now. If you look at that picture where it shows the bar stools, doesn't it seem like folks would be at those bar stools eating food and not just slurping milkshakes? I know that's an assumption. And even the owner could not confirm for certain that food was served. I spent 20, 30 minutes talking to John Plants. He couldn't even confirm for certain. But don't, what, don't you kind of think that people would be eating food there? It's a... It's an easy assumption. Easy assumption. I know it's not. We don't but have 100% fact is the problem. Yeah, we've made... We've well, made assumption not, before not, and, and proven not, to be I'm wrong. I'm not talking about we in particular, but historians have made some... You know, Erroneous assumptions. Yeah, they, they make assumptions about things because we, we're conditioned to think of things the way we know them. And, right. And people do things differently 100, 100 years ago even. Over 100. But I'm saying as, as early as 100 years ago, things were drastically different from what we know today. And so it's, it's easy to, uh, to see things through the lens of our own lives and, uh, and not real. I mean, like, I didn't know this until, uh, until I don't know, a couple of years ago. Apparently, because, because the lights went out, because there wasn't electricity always, forever, you know, for the last, you know, throughout history, uh, people used to go to bed when, when the sun went down. And then they'd get up in the middle of the night and they'd go hang out with friends. They'd, they'd sleep twice. I didn't they'd, know that. They'd go to sleep. They'd get up in the middle of the night. Set your source. And they'd go and hang out. Uh, okay. I believe you. I believe you. You don't have to set your source. And Finish then, your thought. I and, then they'd, and then they'd go back to bed for another three or four hours and get up in the morning. But who, who would know that unless somebody wrote it in a history book somewhere? And what the owner of the store is basing the history of Timberlakes on is a lot of photography that was given to him. And to his credit, right now the photography has not showed any food on the bar. Mm -hmm. So he's not willing to say food was served. It's obvious when I started conversating with him that he'd been asked that question before. Is this the longest restaurant in city limits? He had been asked, this subject has been broached with him before. And he handled it like a true gentleman. Mm -hmm. And I was truly taken aback today by Mr. Plants's um, emotion. When he was talking about Timber Lakes, a business that he's owned since 1977, he was literally tearing up with pride. He's owned it almost as long as I've been alive. That's, he's owned it for that's most a of his life. That's a child. I mean, most of his life. I mean, what is that, 46 years? 45, I think. Well, depending on when. Depending on when. Yeah. Um, all right, that's today's show. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, he says, John yeah. says, tell Judah I will purchase a non-coconut pie. This will be fun. Oh, yeah. And uh, here's uh, BBC, The Forgotten Medieval Habit of Two Sleeps. I believe you. I have no doubt. I believe you. You, 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 speak, you speak stuff that you know. 
I, I've seen it, 12 years of working alongside each other. I'll get to some comments here. Vanessa Parkhill says, Denzel Washington was brilliant and American gangster. He is American gangster. <laughs> Denzel Washington is brilliant in a lot of stuff, but the title we were looking for was American Gangster. Thank you, Vanessa Parkhill. Kevin Higgins, I'd argue Kegler's is the first brewery or one of the first. They had a brewery day one, and the bowling alley was named Kegler's because of the on site brewery. Wow. In fact, when they opened, they described that location as a brew pub. That's good insight right there from Kevin Higgins. Yeah. You know, I, I've had many beers or had many beers at Kegler's. In fact, we went last weekend to the bowling alley. I think it's called now Bolero. And Bolero. I just saw that name used somewhere and I was like, well, that's a funny name. But Bolero now I know why. is as much a bowling alley as it is almost like a nightclub. I wonder if they play. Uh... It was a lot of fun. It was expensive. My in laws, my wife, my in laws, our son, who's five, he rolled. And then our four month old, he only weighs um, nine pounds. The ball was too heavy for him to throw down the lane because he's a baby. He's four months old. Um, I, but yeah. one of the things that I was really taken aback was the vibe. Tell him he'll get it, get it eventually. And the music was like just bumping. It was, it was they, fun. They only play Ravel music? I don't know if that's the case. It was very much like a club. Where I was going with this is I used to go to Kegler's a lot because I played a lot of competitive pool. I loved to gamble and shoot pool and played in pool leagues. And at one time, Kegler's had a number of bar box tables Bar box tables are the tables you put quarters in. You push the uh, quarter slot, and then you get the balls coming out the yeah. chute. And I'd go, and I'd, you know, 20 a rack, 50 a rack, whatever it may be, or you're playing sets. After we were done playing pool, we would go roll some balls and, you know, bowl. We'd bowl. We'd order pitchers of beer. The things that always frustrated me about getting beer at Kegler's, they served the pitchers with that little thing, that big thing in the pitcher that kept the beer cold. It was this like ice shoot in the pitcher. And it pissed me off because it took away space uh, or volume for the fluid. You're like, that's not the beer I could be drinking. It was a cone that was in the pitcher where they kept ice in it to keep the beer cold. Mm. But it undoubtedly diminished the volume of beer you received. And that frustrated me. Understandable. Understandable. Um, Lloyd Snook and Michael Payne tomorrow. Real talk with Keith Smith. This is the I Love Seville show for J Dubs, Judah Wickower, Judah B. Woodcower, Judah Mr. Yiddish Woodcower. My name is Jerry Miller, and this is the I Love Seville show on a Thursday. So long, everybody.